Uh, for the next topic, I'm going to point to Alan. I know that there's been some uh, changes around arc energy reduction pertaining to multifamily residential. Can you uh, talk to the audience about those changes? A absolutely, and this is an extremely important topic uh, for, for safety for the electrical contractor, and we continue to take uh, great advances, I think, in, in providing protection for the, for the electrical contractor in this space, and the 2020 NEC is, is no exception to that. And uh, let's, let's first start with, with probably the, the major change to this, which is the documentation. Uh, the documentation around this particular space uh, makes sure that we, we understand the arcing current level that's gonna unfold in a, in, a, in a condition where an arcing condition would happen, and then the, the means that we're gonna provide to detect that are, are picked up and addressed with that arcing detection component. So we are now have a prescriptive requirement in the code that must demonstrate that, and the contractor is gonna to have to demonstrate that to the inspector that that's been done. Now, the contractor may have to look to support from, from a services organization or, or for somebody to do an arc energy study to understand what that is, uh, but we have to make sure that all of those provisions are in place and documented for this. You know, Alan, that's a great point because if you don't include those costs and those plans to your schedule, that can be a big impact. You know, in the 2017 NEC, we really could just pick any of the methods and you sort of check the code compliance box where this goes the extra level of saying, well, a study's been done. So you know your bolted fault current, you know your arcing current, and then you know your clearing time. So you know if you're in, the, in that window or not and you can show that with documentation. And there's tools available, both online and in using services to get arcing current. But having that documentation in place now shows that whatever method you pick is actually gonna provide a benefit. It's actually gonna provide a reduced energy exposure to the worker, and, and that's why I think it's so important to have. It, it, also, it also moves us into really, that, that kind of leads us into maybe the next item here, right, as you talk about selecting the method. And, and we've had a list of methods that you had to install something and, and write that the documentation is gonna ensure that the protection is there and, and actually set right. And so as we move into the different methods, uh, we've now added the, just an instantaneous breaker as one of those capable items. But once again, we have to go back and understand what's the instantaneous setting of that breaker or the level of that breaker versus the documentation of what that arcing current is. I think we also need to be extremely clear here that this isn't, this isn't about a temporary adjustment. I can't turn it down and turn it back up to do that work. We're wanting to make sure that the settings of that breaker are always in place for when the electrical worker is going, going in there to do it. So you don't get to set it up high and, and, and assume that the electrical worker will turn it down and then go in and do the work and then turn it back up. That's not how this, that's not how this section is set up to perform or what we're, what we're, re, what we're permitting to do here. That, yeah, that's a key point, Alan. Uh, we now, and, and that's in 240.87 for, for circuit breakers. And I think that most contractors are familiar with the requirements of 240.87. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about circuit breakers, now we specifically say that you cannot temporarily adjust that instantaneous. That's a very dangerous practice for a lot of reasons. We don't have time to get into all of them today. Keep in mind, if you're under the 2017 NEC, Starting January 1st, 2020, this is also going to apply to a fuse installation at 1,200 amps or more. So it would be easy to fall into the trap and think that arc energy reduction applies only to circuit breakers. Right. Starting January 1, 2020, it's going to be fuses as well. New requirements in both 240.67 for fuses rated 1,200 amps or larger and circuit breakers that can be, that are set at that are rated at or can be set at 1,200 amps or larger. We're going to have to do commissioning testing. That's going to be on-site testing to verify that the arc energy reduction method you chose functions properly. We can use primary current injection or another approved method. This has to be done by a qualified person and it has to be based on the manufacturer's instructions. Written results of that test have to be made available to the authority having jurisdiction. And there's an informational note that tells us that 
primary current injection testing isn't going to work for all of the methods because if we do that with a fuse, we're going to open the fuse. And there may be some methods that don't rely on current to get the job done. It may, it may see the arc flash and, and open the device. In recent editions of the NEC, um, we've seen evolution in safety by design provisions. This is one of them. Uh, Alan, when he started talking about this, uh, this change and what happened here in 240, 67, and 87 as it relates to multifamily larger service equipment at that 1200 amp threshold and larger, is uh, not only for protection of persons that may have to perform justified energized work, but it helps owners in that uh, they've got a protection from a first, uh, first arcing fault. It's going to protect equipment and property as well. So this is a really nice change that's evolved over the last three cycles in the NEC. Yeah, I think it's important that we, you know, Jim mentioned following the manufacturer's instructions because the documentation piece of this section will really set you up to make sure you know what the breaker settings are supposed to be and that that gets verified of when the performance testing is done, as well as the performance test itself following manufacturer's instructions to ensure that all of the systems are working properly, they're wired correctly, all of the, if there's current sensors or other type of sensors, that they're the correct polarity installation, and that you have a system that's functioning as, as you commission it. And I think all of that sort of works together. You know, when we think about residential, particularly multifamily residential, a lot of times you don't have a lot of highly inductive loads. Um, those products will ship from the factory with the breaker settings at minimum. So if there's specific settings by a study or any of that nature, then that would need to be done during a commissioning process. But it's also an example of where you might also want to look at things such as, does it coordinate with the tenant breaker? Uh, you know, that, that might be downstream of the 1200 amp main in this case. And so all of those are considerations. Absolutely. So, so when we roll this together, now, instead of just picking an arc energy reduction method, you have to pick an arc energy reduction method, you have to prove that it's going to work, and then you have to test it. That's right. That's right. That's a, that's a big win for worker safety. Mm -hmm.